Hello everyone, welcome to What If I Say Become a Villain in High School DxD Part 5. Before we start please go support Rage Raven for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 16. Calm and Tranquility. Previously we saw Miyuki introduce herself to the Haidu residents as a new member, she was introduced as Miyuki Shiba, so as to not attract attention, Issei manages to make it into a situation where no one is bothering her. They all then convince Issei to let them come to Kuo Academy, as Issei reluctantly agrees to do so. Once inside the academy, Nix introduces herself as the teacher, much to Issei's surprise, and then the kids come in, as they sit with Issei, much to the academy's surprise and anger, they desire to split them up. Meanwhile Rias and Sona converse on the new students and teacher, when Rias brings up Miyuki to Sona, which causes her to be surprised, as she pales that this would be her sister, she then heads to the class deciding to check on her at a later time. After a while, Miyuki is stopped by Sona, who demands to say that she is her sister, Miyuki was against this, and Issei intervenes, assuring that she is not her sister, pretending to be unaware of Sona having a younger sister causing her to back off. The next time, they all try to deal with the Kuo students, as Quinella and Charlotte expose them one by one, they expose the perpetrators as they all watch in horror, however the girls are far from done, they make it clear that the others are equally complicit in their actions, as they make it clear that they will not be forgiven no matter what happens. They also expose the Kendo duo and Aika Kiryu, as they reveal them to be substance abusers and a sex offender respectively, as they then leave, the group tries to go to class, only to be stopped by Sona and Rias, they deal with them and then go to class. Meanwhile, the faction leaders discuss what they have to do now, now that the Aokai faction has fallen, as they needed to bring the Red Dragon Emperor to their side at all costs, they also discuss what Seraphil last location was, as they decide to talk to Issei, since he was their best bet on what they would know. As this happens, Issei was visited by Kunu who begged him to save her mother, as Issei coldly refused her any request, many were surprised by how cold he had become, as Aika tried to reason with him, but he ignored her and went back to his room, with his group following him. The next day, I do residence, 7.30 am. Issei woke up, however, he suddenly felt heavy all of a sudden, as he was not able to move his hands, Drake knew of the situation he was in as he was laughing his ass off. Partner, you might want to look beside you. Drake exclaimed mentally as he continued laughing making Issei confused, sighing he decided to look sideways, he was about to scream, but kept his mouth to not wake them up. He saw both Quinella and Charlotte sleeping on either side of him, with Nix taking his right hand along with Charlotte. But that was not the issue, they both were sleeping in a lingeries, even Nix was sleeping in a somewhat similar position. Couldn't you tell me this earlier? Issei spoke with slight anger in his voice. I could, but I chose not to. Drag spoke in a mocking tone, making Issei completely embarrassed, but you can't deny it they are quite the looker. Even then, I I was not expecting this, when did this happen, how did this happen? What is even going on? Issei spoke in disbelief, as he looked at the girls, Drag then explained to him. You see, the girls have developed a liking to you, not just liking but true love, they care for you like your own, and I was expecting you to see it. Drag spoke in a cheerful yet surprising tone, as he continued, even Nick saw it, the girls love you for who you are, Issei, and I believe this was the combined plan of the three girls. I see Issei spoke with a little regret, he couldn't deny it, that both Charlotte and Quinella loved him, he started to develop a liking for them, something even he failed to notice, moments later, Quinella started to pull him closer towards him, as Issei spoke in worry. Um Quinella, please wake up Drag, then spoke, have fun, partner. Drag disconnected the connection as Issei shouted in worry, hey Drag. Don't leave me alone. Ice, please don't go, Quinella muttered in her sleep as she hugged him, he was in a weird position, his hand was being used as a pillow by Charlotte and Nix, while Quinella pulled him towards him, Issei looked up to see her being worried, understanding that she had a nightmare, Issei used his free hand to rub her head, making her be alright, Issei had an idea that she must have been abandoned in her childhood. Quinella calmed down, as she eventually wakes up, she groggily rubs her eyes, Issei looked at her, as Quinella speaks with a smile. Morning, Issei Issei looked at her and asked, Quinella, can I ask you something? Quinella smiled and gave a nod, seeing that she had brought Issei close to her chest, she became flustered and released him, she sat up on the bed, as Issei asked her, is it true? Have you fallen in love with me? Quinella looked away upon hearing this, she had a flustered look, as a blush creeped on a cheek, it was obvious, even to Issei, that she was in love with him. Why yes I have fallen for you. Quinella tried to make eye contact with Issei Haidu, as Issei smiled towards her, he looked at her and spoke. I guess I am surprised, I am not going to lie, and I would like to apologize for not seeing this earlier, but I think I am also falling for you. 
Aquinel exclaimed, in surprise, as Issei spoke, You defended me from the factions, calling them out for the hypocrites they are, you even went so far as to expose the Kuo Academy students, you and Charlotte both, both of you were one of the reasons why my life has become better, and I guess, even I have fallen for you, Issei spoke with a slight blush. Quinella was silent for a while, before suddenly smiling genuinely, and with a smile that was completely filled with light, she was happier than ever before, as she spoke. Issei Issei shook his head, as there was then sudden coughing, as it revealed a glaring Nix and an annoyed Charlotte. Issei Nix growled, making Issei shiver, as he exclaimed, Wait. I can explain, and Nix's expression then changed to that of a smile, as she then spoke, Oh I knew of their feelings, I actually encouraged them to confess one day, although I was not expecting them to go down this route. Nix then changed into a sly smile, so ice, how is my lingerie? Um well Issei was a blushing mess, as he looked at the girls, their bodies were clearly seen in front of his eyes, he couldn't help but blush looking as the girls were happy seeing that their strategy worked. After a while, Charlotte asked, Issei, do you see me as the same as Charlotte? Issei gave a nod, making the girl beam in happiness, she was happy that Issei accepted her into her life, as Issei then spoke, I think we should go to sleep. Nix then responded, agreed, it is a holiday anyway. Quinella spoke soon, yep. They all then go to sleep knowing that today is a holiday, so they can sleep till late. Once they doze off to sleep, a magic circle opens up in their room, this was revealed to be Serzich's Lucifer and Rhea's Gremory. The former had a sly look on his face, while the latter was feeling jealous seeing those three next to the one she loved. It should have been me. Rhea's angrily thought, not happy by what they were seeing. Serzich's compassed himself and spoke with a serious tone. I do, we need to talk. Serzichas tried to wake up Issei, but he did not respond, he was fast asleep, as Rias was not having any of it, she then shouted. Wake up, Issei. Serzichas tried to stop his sister, however it was too late, as Quinella had her hand raised out and exclaimed in annoyance. Shut up. People are trying to sleep. Electric current had been released from her hands electrocuting Rias and sending her flying, she was partially charred and completely knocked out, her hair was completely ruined, as Serzichas could only fasip him seeing this. I do residence, 10 p.m. Serzichas and Rias were seated on the couch of the room, with Rias having a sort of messed up afro-like hairstyle, moments later Issei comes out with the girls, all fully dressed, as Issei spoke in a deadpan tone. I don't even want to know about your choice of hairstyle. Rias was embarrassed as she looked away, with Serzichas chuckling, Issei looked at them and asked, why are you even here? We just want to know what happened to Seraphol Leviathan. Serzichas changed his tone into a serious tone, as Issei feigned surprise as he asked, why would I know? Serzichas shook his head and spoke seriously. Don't misunderstand me, did you go to the mall on 14th of April? Serzichas asked to which Issei nodded, as he responded, were you at the arcade around 9pm? Yes. And how do you know about this? Have you been stalking me? Issei asked seriously with slight anger in his voice as Serzichas shook his head, he did not want to anger him, we saw security recordings of the mall, and we knew Sir Afol came to the same arcade at the same time, that is why we assumed that you would know it. Issei shook his head and lied to him, I didn't even meet her, if you think that I would, I was busy helping Miyuki with her games. I see Serzichas spoke, however Rias ran her mouth. If you lie to us, then Serzichas tried to stop her from doing a mistake, as Issei glared at Rias and spoke, or else what, Gremory? Issei spoke with anger in his voice, threatening me is not wise, didn't you remember what happened last time? Rias gulped in fear, and she started to fear, Serzichas clenched his fist in anger, they remembered how Issei nearly killed them, and dared them to do something about it. Is there anything else? Issei asked, as Serzichas calmed himself and spoke. I was going to negotiate with you for your help against Malak, but I don't think now is the time, considering. Serzichas gave a side glare to Rias, who shivered, both Serzichas and Issei were angry with her, she ruined your mood. You would have been wasting your time anyway. Issei spoke in a mocking tone, as Serzichas sighed expecting this, he could only teleport with Rias in tow, she had plans of coming back to the house sometime in the future. Miyuki, Artemis and Elizabeth came into the house soon later, as they spoke. We sensed a devil here Miyuki asked, as Issei responded. Serzichas and Rias showed up, they wanted to know about Seraphol. Miyuki nodded, while controlling her anger, as she asked, so what happened? Issei responded, nothing much, they suspect nothing. And what will happen if they do come to know? Artemis asked with curiosity, as Issei responded, nothing, they can only sit there clench their fists or grit their teeth, that is what they can do, they know what will happen if they try to even attack me or any of us. Artemis nodded upon this, as Elizabeth spoke, well, with the civil wars going on, the factions have to try and keep their reputation, Elizabeth spoke, remembering how the Saras are having a troublesome time due to handling the situation. 
it is bound to happen, when the situation is done, there will be no factions, the leader's time is ticking, soon they will know that there is no escape, and their demise is unstoppable, and at this point, they are only delaying the inevitable. Issei spoke seriously as Elizabeth and Artemis nodded. Nix then asked, but what will you do about Valerie, Gondol and Ingvold? Unlike us who joined you willingly, they still have not joined you. Issei nodded, he couldn't deny that they may pose a problem sometime in the future. This also made Artemis and Elizabeth a bit concerned. They remembered asking to deal with Valerie herself, but Issei had decided to deal with her himself. Now that you mention it, Gondol still has faith in the factions, but from what I have heard from her, her inner self is starting to lose their faith, and as for Valerie, she will die the moment she thinks of betraying me, and finally Ingvold, I am not so sure what she is thinking, she is willing to do anything for my approval, but honestly, I don't give a damn what she does, and she cannot break her promise by revealing to anyone Issei spoke with a shrug at the end, as he knew that they can't do anything. Even then, I was genuinely surprised, out of all the girls, these two are the only ones who are not trying to get me to like them. Issei spoke remembering how most of the Gremory girls, along with Kuroka and La Fay, are apologizing thinking that Issei will like them. They have been nothing but a headache to him at this point. Not to mention, I still remember Ingvild being the only one who has started to grow a spine, that's a first. I assumed the truth would break her down, Issei's words earned a shook head from Nyx, as she speaks with a little venom in her voice, but that won't change anything, I doubt she would even destroy the faction she calls her home. Issei nodded in agreement to Nyx's words. Exactly, Valerie is only with me, because of the bet she lost, otherwise I am pretty sure she would be beside Azazel right now, Issei spoke coldly, leaving the other girls in agreement, especially Charlotte and Quinella. So what is the next course of action? Quinella asked seriously, as Issei responded, we lay low, relax ourselves for a while, and watch as the chaos in the factions take place, but I do believe that there is one faction that is barely affected by this, Issei spoke seriously. What is that? Elizabeth asked with curiosity as he responded, a Hindu faction, this was due to the fact that they joined the alliance only to deal with Trahiksa, I remember Azazel talking to Shiva about asking him and the others to join the alliance, and I even met him once, he did not seem to be as dangerous when I first met him, and he was surprisingly mature, but then again, he was convinced by Dai's lies and even ignored the visions of the future, if anything, he did the least damage, so his faction is stable, for now at least, if he or the other Hindu gods screw up, then even they are done for Issei spoke seriously earning nods from Elizabeth and Artemis. Plus, even I want to have a vacation, I want to relax for a while, before we take down our next faction, Issei spoke with a smile, earning sweat drops from most girls, as they all sighed, Issei wondered what he should do for his vacation, while the other girls also decided to follow what Issei asked, and lay low, and watch the chaos unfold. Scene change. I do residence, 11 pm. Ingvold and Valerie have been discussing on their next plan ahead, as the factions have not been doing well, Valerie then spoke, so what now? Valerie asked Ingvold, they were among the first to know about Issei being Malak's superior, as Ingvold spoke seriously. I don't honestly know, Issei is only formal with us and avoids us like the plague whenever he does not want to be near us, Ingvold's tone did hint of some sadness, she was not sure of turning against the factions like Issei and Valerie did, with the latter doing it out of force. Agree, he really hates us, but then again, we are responsible for this, right? Valerie spoke with equal sadness, she never officially fell for Dai, but at the same time, she did have feelings for the man that saved her, and she, along with the rest, also had looked down upon Issei, with both her and Ingvold attacking Issei, with Ingvold attacking due to Issei insulting her back then lover and Valerie doing this out of anger and grief. Even then, we cannot just give up yet, Issei still kept us alive, he could have killed us, and not even anyone could stop him, we should at least repay him back for everything he has done for us. Ingvold spoke in a determined tone, with Valerie nodding in agreement. Let's not make Issei like us, no, the girls of the Gremory, Kuroka and La Fay think by doing this, Issei will love them, but no, instead, let's focus on our efforts to make Issei, not love, not trust, but to tolerate us, let's make him tolerate us, first, and see what happens after that. Valerie suggested Ingvold, to which she nodded, as she speaks. I agree, like that once we can make him tolerate us, at least he will listen to us, and then we can see what we can do in order to repay his actions. Valerie nods in response, both the girls were determined to make Issei at the very least tolerate them, they both then left to make a plan for that, hoping that one day, he tolerates them. Scene change, time skip, a few days later, I do residence, 3 pm, things haven't been going well in Kuo Academy, due to what happened, that day, several of the students were expelled, due to their actions, among them was Dai Haidu, as he was the primary culprit, not knowing that he was long dead. His mother accepted this, as his sister was even more devastated that he was scum even in school. 
The boys Mitsuda and Motohama were expelled on the spot for being complicit in the rumors, they were petitions for the boys to be arrested, but the judge instead gave them a mercy plea and sent them to a juvenile detention center where they were to be kept until their education was done, it may not be like prison, but it was prison to them. Not to mention, the girls that loved him all broke up with him while feeling guilty for being complicit in what they did to say due to listening to their lies. Motohama was the worst affected as the girl slept with a man behind his back, which shocked and devastated him. Both the boys accepted their punishment and hoped to be better men. The girls Mureyama and Kadis were also expelled due to assault on fellow students, their titles were stripped away, and they issued a lifelong ban on them from ever participating in kendo. This broke the girls internally, and when they were in the court, the judge did arrest them, and they were put on a 90-day arrest with a six-month probation. Aika Kuryu was also expelled and put on a 12-month probation due to her actions, she was also asked to be away from any males due to her actions and was sentenced to go to a psychiatric facility, either way, her whole life was completely ruined, there was little to zero chance her life will be the same again. This was true for all the human tormentors of Issei Haidu, their life was ruined and their parents desired to have little contact with them and would disown them if they did not change their ways. As for the devils, Jinshiro Saji narrowly escaped being expelled since it was his final year. The main reason was that the devils manipulated the school board preventing his expulsion, since if they had to do so, then several others would have to be expelled as well. However, he was given probation, which did not make him happy at all. He hated the two girls Quinella and Charlotte for ruining his life and he will make them pay. After that he was sentenced to keep his distance from Issei and his allies, else he would be expelled and imprisoned in Tartarus, which did not make him happy at all. Rias and Sona, on the other hand, were not spared, both of them had to suffer the consequences of their actions, Rias was the worst affected, she couldn't complete her studies in Kuo anymore, which greatly hurt her, she hated the decision, Sona was also affected, due to her lack of action, Sona and her peerage were called incompetent and worthless, due to their lack of action, which greatly affected her, Sona was even more fearful due to Miyuki's presence, and Seraphil not showing up. This forced the devil elders to remove her, and the seat of Leviathan was left vacant, but that was not the worst part, their reputation was as good as gone, people hated and looked down upon them, and it was not just Kuo Academy, but the entirety of Kuo Town, any time they were seen on the streets, and that was to those that were not arrested, they were either being talked behind the back or they were hated completely, and people even sometimes booed or jeered behind their backs. Issei was working on something else, as Quinella came close to him and sat beside him, as she spoke to her lover. Hey Issei Issei looked at Quinella as he was working on his unknown dictator, as she looked at it, she rested her head on Issei's shoulder, as Issei spoke looking at her with a smile. What's up? Quinella looked at her with a loving smile, as she asked, I was wondering, can we go on a date today? Issei looked at her, as she wondered what Issei intended for her to do, as he spoke, well I have some work to do, and then we can go about the date. So tell me where do you want to go? Issei asked, making Quinella happy, as she spoke, I would like it if we went nearby. Quinella spoke with a genuine smile as she then responded, but I would be happy with the places of your choosing. I see Issei looked at her and gave a nod, he needed to finish this quickly and then head for his date. Well, let's try to go in the evening, alright. Quinella gave a nod as she watched Issei work on the unknown dictator, he was planning to unlock the sacred gears balance breaker as he did not know any of the balance breaker's capabilities. Issei, why do you need a balance breaker for the unknown dictator? Quinella asked as she received the answer. Every sacred gear has its own balance breaker, or at least every sacred gear that was known to the factions have that, the ones that are unknown still don't have this feature yet. Case in point, Nari Kiri, usually balance breakers are considered bugs in the sacred gear systems, right? Quinella nodded, remembering what she was informed about the sacred gears. I believe that certain factors can trigger this bug, as every sacred gear is connected to your emotions, hence, if we can bring out this bug, then we can do anything, this I did with all the gears that I had copied and cloned, except for the ones that have just been created from scratch. The primary factors are a stimulus which triggers a strong emotional response, allowing us to do that. Issei spoke seriously, as Quinella responded, so these factors depend on our emotions. Issei nodded and responded, mostly yes, but you can forcefully trigger them, even false emotions can work, as long as you have that sense of feeling, that was how Dai Haidu unlocked his balance breaker, even though he trained, he never unlocked his balance breaker, so using emotions can be considered a way. Even myself, I unlocked the boosted gear when I was overwhelmed by Rainer and had the desire to protect Asia, two years ago. I see so that means if you have the correct emotion and or the correct amount of emotion, you can achieve balance breaker. Issei nods again, as Quinella watches him work on something, as the phone then glows, the phone was the form unknown dictator had taken. It's working. 
Issei exclaimed, as Quinella also had a happy look on her face, as the glow stopped moments later. Issei activated the book as he spoke. Balance breaker. Game breaker. Issei spoke as he commanded a nearby television, he realized that he can not only hack and control the technology. Issei also gained full autonomous control over the device, meaning he can control the television to convert them into its basic stage, for instance, he was able to turn a smart television into a television from the 1950s, meaning he could rewind the device back in time. Issei tried reverting it back and he decided to transform into its most advanced stage. As the television disappeared and it turned into several rods as they all started to glow, he then activated the television and suddenly some projections started to come in front of it. So this is the most advanced version of the television. Quinella asked with awe and surprise as Issei responded, I guess, judging by the looks, I think this is the most advanced version and I think that this would be the maximum version of what you can call a television since technology is used to shorten the size rather than increase and become more convenient. So I think it is the maximum version and I think it will be a small device. Issei explained as he can watch anything he wants at the most high definition, meaning it is the most advanced television, he also found out that there are several other features. Issei theorized that this is not the full potential of this balance breaker, it could affect anything with metal, more testing would be required. Scene change, time skip, who outskirts, 5 pm. Issei was waiting for Quinella as he wore a regular blue shirt with a white jacket, he wore blue jeans and his hair was well trimmed. He also wore red shoes. Now where is she? Issei was waiting for her as he looked around to see where she was. Moments later, Quinella showed up, she wore two lavender earrings, her hair was left open, she wore a purple dress skirt, black leggings, which covered her legs, knees, thighs and lower legs, and lavender heels. She also had a headband on her hair as it matched her clothing. Her purple skirt had frills, which had extended all the way till her hips. She had a blush on her face as she called out. Issa turned around to see Quinella, which was his date, he knew that unlike Rainer, this date wouldn't end in a disaster. Issei had a slight flushed look, Quinella looked beautiful, as Issei spoke with a smile. You look breathtaking Quinella had a blush upon this, as she spoke. I hope you liked it, I decided to go with simple, since a much complicated dressing would be too much. Quinella turned away, as she spoke with a pout, stop staring, you are embarrassing me. Ha. <laughs> Issei spoke with a grin, as he asked, so where do you want to go? Anywhere you want, I think we should go on a simple date, not a complicated one. Issei agreed to Quinella's words as she came close to him and pulled his hand towards her and embraced it. To an outsider, they seemed like lovers, as Issei had a blush on his face, he promised to make this date as good as he could, and thanks to his experience with taking Nick's on one, he knew exactly where to go. They first headed to a local restaurant where they ordered some Japanese food, moments later they dug into the food and they had an enjoyable meal. A while later, they ordered some desert and once they were done, they paid for the bill and left. Once they left, they decided to go to an amusement park where they decided to do some shopping for Issei. Quinella practically dragged him to the apparel shop where they made sure he got some clothing, she made him try a lot of clothing, she made him wear several of the clothing that she liked and purchased. Issei understood that she was more of a commanding type, as most Asmodeus were, that was a primary thing she had inhabited, either way, he enjoyed and liked the choices she had made for him. They headed to the arcade finally, as soon as he entered, Issei remembered the time when he had to deal with Seraphil, when she had tried to kidnap Miyuki, he shook his head, with Quinella asking in concern. Ice, is something wrong? Issei then spoke. Nothing nothing is wrong, say what game would you like to play? I will probably go for a claw game, haven't tried that ever since, well you know. Quinella spoke, as Issei chuckled, he then responded. Well then, let's go. Issei pulled her to the claw game, making the Asmodeus girl confused, as Issei put in a coin, as he released Quinella, she compassed herself, moments later, and started to move the claw. She managed to get the toy within the first try, it was a plushie which she had wanted, as she was careful in not dropping it, she managed to pull it to the location, as she dropped it, and moments later the toy was in her hands. You did it. Issei exclaimed in surprise, even though he couldn't do this in the first try, congratulations. Quinella. Issei congratulated her, making the girl blush. Thank you here. Quinella gave the plushie to Issei as he was surprised by this as he asked, you are giving this to me? Why? Quinella responded, is it not obvious, you gave me such a good time and have been there with me from day one, you are the reason why I am so happy, I wanted to give this to you as a memento. So to remember our date. Quinella spoke with a blush, making Issei completely speechless, she suddenly realized that they were in a public place and spoke something else to alleviate the situation, trying her best to maintain her composure, and you should be happy that I showed you my skills. Of course, Quinella Sama, of course Issei spoke with a sly smile, making the girl lose her composure and become a blushing mess. 
She kept her hands on her face to hide her blush, making Issei chuckle seeing her like this, all in all, this has been a good day for Issei, Issei accepted the plushie and kept it in his pocket dimension. They soon played some other games and then they headed back home. Scene change, I do residence, 9.30pm, Issei rested for a while, the date will be remembered in his heart for a very long time. He was happy as he knew that while he could rest, the factions were having trouble. The chaos that they managed to do, Rizavam would have been jealous if he were still alive, he wanted to release Trahiksa, and even God did not know what his intentions were after all. He only revealed to release Trahiksa, Issei wondered, why did he always want that, like if he wanted to create chaos, then all he could do was just attack and make the faction leaders desperate, then again, he was not the smartest, amongst he devils. It's ironic that the one that desired to perform chaos, was now performing less chaos than the once unsung savior of the factions ever did. He wondered if he never got involved in the supernatural what would have happened. Speaking of Rizavam, he remembered a conversation that had happened between them a year ago. He never truly understood how was he going to control Trahiksa, let alone release them, but he had a few ideas, he believed that by using the holy relics it could be possible. But why, why was he so adamant on doing it now, and why he never tried this before, there has to be a reason. His answers were told by the man. According to Issei, and like many of the Lucifer descendants, Rizavam was a battle maniac, to some extent that was, he desired chaos for the sole purpose to satisfy his true devil nature. He always believed the devils to be evil, wicked, brutal, bad, scum, wrong, brutes, as well as vicious, and it is the role of a devil to kill every single person they don't like. And he was a devout follower of that, Issei even lost twice against the man, before finally killing him for good. In his dying breath, he asked why did he protect the ones that looked down upon him, that humiliated him, and even tormented him, he had lost everyone to his brother, and when he, he could take down the faction leaders if he so wanted to. When he responded that Issei wanted to be the hero. Rizavam called him an idiot, he stated that he doesn't need to be a hero for people that hate or look down upon him, and don't appreciate him. If he continues this, then he will prove that he has no self-respect or self-worth. Issei ignored this and still desired to be the hero, as there was peace and tranquility for the next few months. However, Rizavam's words started to leave some doubts in Issei, primarily the fact that no one appreciated him and always gave his brother the credit. They hated and looked down upon him, even bullied and humiliated him for that. However, there were two incidents that finally broke the camel's back, and that was when his brother along with his perverted friends, finally taunting and goading about his achievements, that made him snap, and Ingvil choosing Dai's words over his, even after he tried to explain. After that, he realized, the factions never cared or loved him, they wouldn't even bother if he died, or if he was in the hospital, this was true when even his family did not visit him, he tried his best to prove himself to be better, but that never happened, the worst part was when he found out the truth for himself, they were partying when he was literally fighting for his life, after that, he decided to never help them ever again. Eventually, he saw how far the factions had fallen, many devils and other supernatural creatures still looked down upon humanity. And while making the alliance, many of the supernatural creatures ignored the grievances that many minority groups have experienced. This was true during the Exorcist Rebellion, where several had turned against the alliance, due to them hating the fact that they have to befriend those that were potentially responsible for the death of their loved ones and family members. Not to mention, wherever Issei went he was neither welcome in his house, the supernatural world or even the school. Due to Dai Haidu making his life miserable, he saw how the women he once loved were spending time with him, as he only saw them for trophies. He even remembered his words that he had said to him. This is something you will never enjoy. Issei took a deep breath, he remembered how when Raynor killed him, he was shocked, for once he hoped that things would be better, if she did kill him, he didn't mind dying, since that would free him from this hell. But as fate loved to screw with him, as he was saved by Rhea's gremory, it was revealed to be his younger brother's doing, he believed that he cared for him, but that was just to maintain his reputation. And then every girl he had a crush on hated and or rejected him, even those that he genuinely loved weren't spared, he still remembered their words, and he won't forget them no matter what happens. Especially their words. He did everything imaginable for them, and yet he was treated like garbage. Partner. Drag screamed into him, making him snap out of his memory. Issei realized this and calmed down. Thanks Drake to which the concerned dragon nodded in gratitude, he was happy as Issei calmed down, those memories often caused him to go on near aggressive fits, he nearly activated the juggernaut drive multiple times due to his fury. Speaking of which, what should we do with Dai's gear? Issei asked to which Drake responded, you can either release him, where he will go to the next host, or you can do what you can to take him, Krom has even stated that he doesn't mind joining us. Issei nodded as he spoke, I think it would be best to find a way to release him from his prison. Issei spoke, as Drake wonders, this question. How will you achieve it? 
Drake asked incredulously and with surprise as Isaiah responds, I will find out a way, there needs to be a way to reverse what the biblical God has done. Drake nods, as Isay lies on the couch, thinking of all the ways he can to release Krom Kruich from his prison. Scene change, outskirts, vampire territory, 12 a.m. The girl was sitting on the tree of the territory, she still remembered how there was one person who made her life filled with happiness, but to save him, she had to fake her own death. I wonder if I can even remembers me, the girl spoke with a sad tone, given how much she cared for him, she looked around, as her white hair flowed in the background, due to the air. Hey sister. Another girl spoke from a distance, as she looked at the white-haired girl, the girl had pink hair. Yes. The white-haired girl responded, as the pink-haired girl responded, do you think I can will remember us? The pink-haired girl responded, as she spoke, he should, I hope he does, the white-haired girl only looked towards the dark sky, hoping that her love interest will remember her one day. Unbeknownst to the two girls, the icon that they loved was long gone and replaced by someone whom they would never expect to see in a man they loved. Chapter 17. Unknown Suffering. The next day, Greek Pantheon, Mount Olympus, 9.30 am. The black-haired woman was talking with Artemis, she had long eyelashes and blue eyes, she had long black Heim-style hair in a two-tail hairstyle, additionally she wore red ribbons and she wore a blue kimono decorated with floral patterns, she also had a red outer cape. Like most of the gods of the Greek pantheon, she was also angry with Zeus for literally giving away his daughters to the red dragon, this was Hesita, the virgin goddess of the hearth, the right ordering of domesticity, the family, the home, and the state. Additionally, like Artemis and Athena, she is considered a virgin goddess, in addition she also ensured that the house had the highest level of moral values that she embodied were observed, that being rectitude, kindness and generosity. It's been days and Athena has not even talked to any of us, Hestia spoke with a tone that hinted at sadness. I think that the only one that knows about Athena is Artemis, since they live closer, Hermes spoke in response. A few moments later Artemis came inside, as she looked at her fellow gods and greeted them, who returned her greeting, she did not want to be here, primarily due to the fact that she saw the reality of the Greek gods, however it was because of Issei's sake that she is even here. The only one she did have care for was Leto, her mother and Apollo, her brother. Artemis heard everything, as she spoke in response. I can keep an eye on the Red Dragon Emperor, and if that does not work, I can ask my faithful followers to do so. Artemis's words were agreed by everyone, plus, I cannot let her be near that man like him, even less a dragon Artemis spoke feigning fear and disgust, she couldn't show that she admires him in front of her fellow gods, otherwise things would be difficult for her lord. This did not make anyone suspicious of her, as she looked around, she saw that Hestia was not happy with the situation, as she exclaimed angrily. Things have been like this since Malak attacked us. Artemis wanted to shoot her for insulting her ally, but kept an angered look on her face, this was to remove any suspicion. Either way, we can't do anything, Artemis, can you tell us what kind of a man Haidu is? After all, you do live with him. Hermes asked Artemis. Artemis wanted to reveal all the good qualities, however she spoke with a calm voice. She couldn't reveal that she has started to have feelings for him. He seems nice and calm, he did not try anything with us, but I don't trust that man at all. Artemis spoke with a serious tone, however it was feigned, if there was anyone she trusted more than anyone else, it was Issei. I see Hestia spoke seriously before changing into a smile, if that is coming from you, that means he seems to be better than most men. Artemis had to agree, comparing Issei to most men would be disgraceful, as they all discussed what they needed to do, they knew that Haidu would not listen to them, or anyone due to his profound anger towards Zeus, primarily because of his attitude. I do residence, 10.30 p.m. Ingvold Leviathan was sitting on the couch with an annoyed look on her face, the one in front of her was Sona Citri, who had to mask her aura to enter inside, so that Issei does not sense her. For the last time, I decide what I do and when I do. Ingvold exclaimed with an annoyed tone as she spoke, if I want to join Issei, I will and you will not stop me. I don't understand how you can do this, Sona exclaimed with equal anger in her voice, he does not support the factions, and you doing this will only mean you are turning your back, just like he did. And? How is that a problem? Tell me. I listened to all of you, thinking that Dai Haidu was the one to save me, not his brother Issei Haidu, and you force him to work for you, even after everything you did to him. Ingvold exclaimed, her anger was close to snapping, one of the changes that happened after Dai's truth was revealed, coupled with Issei's completely changed personality, had an effect on her as well. I don't even know you anymore, Sona spoke with disbelief, as she saw her getting closer to Issei, however Ingvold did not intend to do that, she was lied to, and she realized the truth first, and it devastated her, many told her that Dai spoke the truth in Issei, the lie, and she fell for that, it was the biggest mistake of her life. The worst part was that Sona did not even research the rumors or lies spread by Rias and just accepted it. She was supposed to be smarter than Rias, but it turned out she was even more foolish than even Ingvold could realize. 
What are you trying to say? Ingvald spoke with surprise, I have learned the truth, a long time ago, I matured, I am still learning from my mistakes, and only an idiot repeats the same mistakes again. Ingvald spoke seriously, but he could be toying with your feelings Sona spoke seriously, he is not a good person for you Ingvald, he is just like Dai. First, don't you dare compare Issei with Dai Ingvald spoke with her hair covering her eyes, it was Issei that saved me, not I, he risked his life, for my sake, and do you know what was the cost? Sona shook her head, due to fear, he nearly got killed and would have even died for my sake, and despite what I did to him, he even cured my illness, without expecting anything in return, and what did I do to him? I treated him with inhumane treatment. Ingvold shouted at Sona, who flinched in fear, but even then, I am equally saddened that it is my fault as well Ingvold spoke sadly, as Sona spoke trying to defend herself. Ingvold, he does not want to help the faction. Ingvold did not respond as she grabbed her by the throat, Sona looked in horror, as Ingvold started choking her, let go of me, please. Ingvold, has had enough, as she releases her, Sona smiles in relief, however before she could react. Smack, Sona was sent flying towards the wall, the sound was loud enough to gather the rest of the house residents, who were all shocked to see what has happened. Issei is right, you factions only see him as a tool, nothing more, nothing less. Ingvold exclaimed with fury in her voice, how dare you. Did you see me as a friend or as a tool for breeding, tell me Sona Citri. Sona could only look away, as Ingvold dropped her, Mickey then asked, what just happened? Ingvold spoke to her in a cold tone, nothing much, the talk is over. Ingvold stormed out of the room, as Quinella watched the scene with amusement, yet there was some disappointment in her looks. This is too tiring, maybe it is time to switch things up, Quinella muttered, as she looked surprised by Ingvold's changed attitude. Quinella was aware that the usual destroying the factions was a bit outdated, not that she was against it, but she believed that if there were more inner agents, it could be useful. She looked at Issei and pondered on all possibilities. Well I wonder if I can destroy the factions, I have a few ideas in mind, I wonder if Issei will let me. Quinella thought with a smile, as she saw Issei approach Sona and grab her by the collar, and he spoke, what the hell are you doing in my house? Issei spoke with anger laced in his voice, with Sona gulping in fear, as she muttered. You um, well Issei was not having any of it, as he shouted, if I see you again, I will make sure to kill you myself. Sona gulped in fear, while some of the house residents were worried about what might happen. Now. Get. The. Fuck. Out. Of. My. House Issei screamed onto Sona, who was nearly about to pass out, she managed to teleport out of there. Issei calmed down, as he looked at the residents. A little harsh, don't you think? Valerie asked in confusion to which Issei sighed and responded, I just hate her very presence, both her and her sister, I hate them. Issei spoke angrily, making some of the audience gulp in fear. Be but why? Valerie spoke with small hints of fear, as Issei calmed down and spoke, I will tell you another time, now if you will excuse me, I need to do some work, Issei said, Valerie nods, not intending to anger him even further, as he left the room, he needed to work on the sacred gears belonging to the Shroud of Turin and the Crown of Thorns and attempt to unlock their balance breakers, as well as Starbuster Star Blaster and Eon Baylor, which he had recreated. The only ones that understood his hatred were the ones that were affiliated with him, minus Valerie and Miyuki, who equally hated Sona. They all left, as there was nothing they could do, Quinella decided to talk to Issei later about a request, since his mood was spoiled due to Sona Citri entering his house without permission. Scene change. Hi do residence, 1pm. Quinella entered Issei's room, as he was working on the crown of thorns. He was seen next to Nyx, who was also helping him make the crown into a sacred gear. This is harder than I thought Issei spoke with slight frustration in his voice, as Nyx was next to him, as she responded, You need to have a little bit more focus, I think what happened today must have irritated you. Nyx spoke with a tone in worry, causing Issei to groan, he is unable to focus on the sacred gear, due to this, as Quinella asks, Did I come at the wrong time? Issei and Nyx turn their attention to Quinella as she looks at Issei, who has a look of worry. Not really, just unable to focus on this. Issei spoke with a tone hinting of sadness. I see Quinella spoke looking at the crown of thorns, as Issei speaks. This can give you visions of the future depending on the path you have chosen, Issei explains, as he then continues, I still wonder why the angels haven't used this. I guess they still believe that they are in the right. Nyx explained with a tone of annoyance, as she looked at Issei, who sighed in frustration. Speaking of which, where is Charlotte? Issei asked with concern, causing some jealousy to brew in Nyx and Quinella. Oh she is with office, she had some things to do, office needed her for some talks, Quinella spoke with a pout, as Issei sighed, this was jealousy that the girls experienced. Don't worry, you girls are as important to me as she is. Issei spoke with a smile, causing a blush to creep among the girls, Issei then spoke, and on the bright side, none of you are insecure. Issei spoke with a sad smile, which caused Quinella and Nyx to turn their attention to Issei in confusion, as Nyx asked, why? 
Why would we be insecure? Quinella nodded in equal confusion to which Issei nodded and responded. Well the girls that belonged to Dai Haidu, or once belonged to them, always fought with each other, they wanted to take Dai for themselves, and this sometimes even escalated into magic duels. Issei spoke, surprising the two girls, this has resulted in me having several sleepless nights thanks to them, causing me to change rooms. I see, so they were insecure thinking that Dai wouldn't love them. Quinella asked, to which Issei nodded. Exactly, they often used to fight, even in school, that was no exception, and well, you know how much trouble the girls caused me right. Issei spoke as both Quinella and Nix felt slightly sad for him. I see well Ice, I and Charlotte see each other as sisters, and me and Nix too, as sisters, I don't know if Nix sees us that way. Nix responded to Quinella's words. I do, we are all family, and we all will stick together, I even consider Malak and Grievous as family. Nick spoke with a smile, turning to both of them, causing Issei to genuinely smile, there were only a few he could trust with his heart and soul, and Nix, Charlotte and Quinella were a few of them. Speaking of which, when do we head back to the underworld? I really want to meet Hades and Persephone again. Nix asked in an excited tone, never did Issei expect to see the primordial goddess of darkness, ever consider Hades and Persephone, as someone she cherished, as Issei responded, in a few days, since right now the factions are watching me, and any problems that happen because of this, well we might have to destroy the faction sooner, no torment will take place. Issei spoke with a sigh, as Nix nodded, they then continued, to help Issei work on the crown of thorns, and make it operational as soon as possible. Scene change. I do residence, 1.30 pm. Team Slash Dog had recovered from their wounds. They were with a volley team, and Azazel who all had managed to recover themselves to the point they could move properly. Ria's and her peerage were also present to celebrate. Their friends gave them a small recovery party as they settled down, but none of them were happy, since the loss of Kaki Samajima and Barakriel was well known at this point. Furthermore, Lavinia Rinai being in this condition was almost too much, Malak, and Grievous's attacks left a complete scar on them, which may never recover. Damn him. Not only were we unable to hurt him. But he sent all of us to the slaughterhouse. Tobio thought with frustration as he saw Valerie approach him. Hey guys. Valerie greeted them, however none of them showed the same enthusiasm as Valerie did, many were furious, internally, one of them was Natsum, she was furious that she was helpless and was unable to do anything against him. Shigyun was saddened by what was going on, Lavinia only had a few years to live, and many were killed during their assault on Grigori, she blamed herself for being weak. Tsuzaku, on the other hand was furious by what happened to Lavinia, she vowed to hunt Malak down and make him pay in the worst way possible, she was going to make him and Grieva suffer for what they did to Barakriel, Kaki and Lavinia. Sei felt the worst since she was helpless against a fight which caused Kaki to die from the aftermath. She did not know what to do now, to add insult to injury, none of them would be in fighting condition for at least a week. Is there any way to take down the droid army, Suzaku spoke with frustration, at this point, it was well known in the factions that the droid army is what they are called right now. I am afraid now, the only one that could take Malak and Grievous along with the army down is Issei Haidu, but even now he refuses to help. Biku spoke with a sad tone, causing Suzaku to clench her fists, she wondered what it take for Issei to help them now. And that was not the only thing that had happened. Lefei spoke with a sad tone as she went on to explain everything that had happened while they were in the hospital. The slash dog team was horrified at what happened during this time, they did not know what to think or how to react due to Issei being revealed as the true hero. Please tell me that it is not true. Natsum spoke with tears forming in her eyes, she did not want to believe Dai was a liar, to which Lefei shook her head. It is, Dai was a fraud, well Issei was the real hero, he tried telling us about it, but we didn't listen. I didn't listen. Lefei spoke with tears in her eyes, Tobio and Suzaku clenched their fists in anger due to being betrayed and toyed with by Dai, but at the same time, they blamed themselves for falling for his lies. You know I won't be surprised if it turns out that Issei Haidu would side with Malak at this point. Tobio's words surprised many as Suzaku responded, Are you serious? Suzaku exclaimed with fear and surprise at the possibility of their only hope turning against them. I hate to say this Suzaku, but what we have done. We have treated him like garbage, worse, we listened to that damned liar and fraud while he did the work for us. Even after knowing that he had the strength to defeat Malak, we still treated him as a weapon or a tool rather than an actual human being. We have really screwed up. Tobio spoke with an angered tone for falling for the lies of a fraud, a liar. So what now? Say asks in fear as Tobio responds. We can only hope that Haidu considers helping us in the near future, even though it won't happen, we can still hope. The other members of Team Slashdog could only nod, despite knowing that Issei won't help them. I am sorry guys, I may be forced to kill you in the future, Valerie thought with tears in her eyes, she was afraid that all Issei has to go is to give her the command and then she will have to kill those she considered as a family. 
You brought this on yourself Valerie, even though I hate what Red has become, but his goals were understandable. Albion spoke mentally with equal sadness, he viewed Vali as his own daughter and hated that she was being controlled by Issei, she had no choice, she accepted the bet between her and Issei and lost. I know Albion, but I don't know if I have the strength to even kill them, when Lord Issei gives the command, Valerie responded to Albion, with the latter hoping that Issei would come to at least tolerate Valerie in the near future. Valerie watched in silence as the team were saddened by all the possibility of what would happen soon. There is another bad news that I need to give. Rhea said, gathering the attention of everyone, Ingvold Leviathan is planning to lead the DXD team. Rhea spoke with a sad tone, causing some to clench their fists, if they hadn't listened to Die, none of this would have happened. Out of all the people, Azazel had a look of sadness, he remembered Quinella and Charlotte's words, and he knew that he was also responsible, although he did not intend to see Issei as a weapon, Issei could clearly see it as that way. Furthermore, Sona and her peerage couldn't show up, primarily because of the fact that Issei threatened her, this morning. She was afraid of showing up due to Issei and Ingvold. Both of whom now terrify her. Not to mention, Seraphal has been missing for days now, with no contact, the search parties have doubled since her being missing, unknown to everyone that Issei had long killed her, the day she went to the arcade, the Satans, and the Devil Council had no choice but to declare her dead and replace the Satan position with someone else, they were considering Ingvold Leviathan, since she was the only one worthy of taking up that position, but wondered what Issei Haidu would think, since all of them came to an agreement that they shouldn't anger him. Not to mention, both Beelzebub and Asmodeus are dating him, Rhea spoke with a tone of annoyance, to which Tobio responded, Am now all that remains is the relationship between Ingvold and Valerie, and he will be dating against all four satanic descendants. Valerie only looked away at this and thought, He won't Tobio, he hates me, he hates all of us. Valerie thought with tears in her eyes, she hated herself for believing Dai over Issei and everything that they had done to him. Is there a chance we can ask or beg for his help against the droid army? Suzaku asked, to which Valerie shook her head and responded, No, he won't help us, he ignored Kunu's pleas for help against the army, he has become really cold to our suffering, Valerie spoke with a tone of sadness, will the others remain equally sad, he no longer wants to help them, because of what they did to him in the past. Although I am surprised by his attitude, he can literally do anything and dare the faction leaders to do something about it. Azazel spoke with a tone of amusement, but he was saddened by what had happened, he did not expect to say to become this aggressive. True, but how did he manage to release Nyx from her prison? Tobio asked with surprise, that was one of the few actions, he still did not believe, how was this possible? You won't believe it Azazel spoke remembering how Shemhazai told him about the incident, however before they could do anything, Issei had come alongside Quinella, Nyx, Charlotte and Miyuki, all four of whom were surprised by the amount of guests in the house. Wow, this seems like quite the party Nick spoke with a mocking tone, causing many to have their guard up in front of them, the guests did not trust her due to her past actions, as Rias demanded the group. You better go somewhere else, Nix. However Issei walked towards her, causing her to lose her confidence, as he spoke, he was not going to let her insult Nix, his girlfriend right in front of their eyes. This is my house, Rias Gremory, she can go wherever she wants, and if anyone should go somewhere else, it is you. Rias gulped at this and went wide-eyed, as Issei saw her as nothing but scum, yet she had the galls to insult someone he cared for. He was not going to allow it, no matter what happens. Rias tries to reason with him. Be but, don't you can know she can be Issei was not in a mood to deal with this idiot as he grabbed a nearby donut and flung it in her mouth, silencing her. This is how we deal with idiots without wasting much effort. Issei spoke with a mocking tone earning nods primarily from Miyuki and Nix, as he then became serious, on a serious note, Rhea's Gremory, let me tell you right here, and right now, I can bring out the true longiness and use truth idea on you, erasing you from existence completely, or I can use the hallucinator and give you hallucinations of Dai Haidu, if you ever disrespect Nix or any of my other girls, if you have a problem with them, talk to me, any questions. Issei spoke coldly, to which Rias looked at him in fear, he was not the man she loved, she was terrified of him, as the donut dropped from her mouth, she thought that Issei was joking on erasing her, but she knew that he wasn't, after all he did nearly kill them before, and she was testing his patience, he then looked at the donut and spoke feigning sadness. What a waste of that donut Issei then became serious, as he responded, I am in a good mood, so that is why I left you with a warning, test my patience at your own peril, and not even your older brother will save you from me. Issei walked away, with his girls leaving a shivering Rias at wake. Well, he only shows kindness to those he deems close to him. Azazel spoke with a neutral tone, sighing seeing the shivering Rias Gremory, her attitude was going to get her killed, as she was basically asking Issei to kill her. Scene change. I do residence, 3 a.m. Issei, Nix, Quinella, Charlotte and Miyuki were present sitting on one of the couches, as on the other side, Ingvold Leviathan was sitting across them. 
This surprised them, as Ingvold constantly requested to talk to them. Upon Drake's suggestion, Issei decided to talk to her. I really hope I don't regret this what do you want now, Ingvold. Issei spoke seriously, he made sure to prevent anyone from intervening or spying on them. Um I wish to join you. Ingvold declared herself to Issei, which earned a look of surprise from everyone, even Issei himself was shocked at Ingvold's declaration. Ingvold, this is no time for jokes. You desire to join us, even when you know what we are doing right now. Miyuki looked at Issei remembering when she found out his real truth of being the leader of the faction that is destroying the other factions. Instead of rejecting him, she joined him without hesitation, like Quinella and Charlotte, the reasons were similar to why she desired to take revenge from the Citri clan. Ingvold shook her head in response, as she spoke, I do wish to join you. Ingvold spoke with a determined tone, you know, today Sona showed me the truth, like you I was also nothing but a breeding stock, I was also a tool to them, if anything I do not desire to join a faction like this. I want to join you, and that is my choice. Ingvold, we are destroying the factions, your friends, they will all die by our hands, if you wish to join us, even after hearing this essay was not able to complete, as she speaks, I know you can't tolerate, and perhaps won't tolerate me, but I would rather die, than be used as a tool for the devils. Quinella and Charlotte can relate to the situation, they were also aware of being used as a breeding tool, although they did not trust Ingvold, they could relate with her, and they believed that Valerie would also be going through this. Ingvold, look, you can live your life normally, I am not going to force you to join, if you don't want to, find another who would love you, for who you are, nobody is going to judge you. Issei spoke almost on the verge of getting up, as Ingvold exclaimed, stop. Issei stopped momentarily, as she spoke, the devils won't leave me in peace, they want me to be affiliated with the Leviathan clan, and not only that, since Dai Haidu was ousted as a fraud, they will want me to marry someone who I don't even know, a high-class devil, who is strong, resulting in strong children, I don't even have freedom to choose who I want to be with. Ingvold spoke with a sad tone, making Charlotte and Quinella relate, they knew that they would be suffering the same fate had the devils found them first, this made them even more happy and grateful that Issei found them first, Ingvold then spoke with a sad smile, in a way, being Dai Haidu's queen, allowed some protection from this. But with him gone, I don't have that, it is only a matter of time before I fall into this. I see. Issei spoke, as he then asked, so they won't let you live in peace, unless you go into hiding. Issei knew of this, but he wanted to see whether Ingvold would be willing to kill those she once deemed as friends. They won't, Issei, they won't Ingvold spoke with a tone of anger, she couldn't even live in peace without soon the devils demanding her to become engaged. Issei was pondering if they should accept her or not, however, someone surprised him as she spoke, I think we should let her join. It was Quinella who spoke, she was serious, as she then turned to Issei and spoke, I know you don't trust her, even I don't, but we can make sure, if she tries to betray us, or even exposes us, then we can eliminate her. She will be in the same situation as Valerie. Ingvold gulped at the prospect of being killed, however she understood the lack of trust they had in her, as Charlotte then spoke seriously, if you are willing to accept these terms, then only you can join. Ingvold then responded to it in an equally serious tone. I accept them, and besides, I haven't told anyone about you guys, even when Office showed me the truth, didn't I? Ingvold's words had some weight, she kept her word. Issei sighed as he spoke. Fine, then, you are in Issei spoke, as he got up, he then turned to her, and gave a glare, if you even think about turning against me, or telling anyone about our conversation to anyone, I will make you beg for death, is that clear? Ingvold gulped at this, but nevertheless nodded, as she saw the group walk away, she sighed, as a small tear came from her eye, she rubbed it, and was determined, she would definitely make him tolerate her one day. That was the goal she and Valerie set up, they will make Issei tolerate them first, and then they will see what can be done next. Scene change, time skip, two days later, I do residence, 10.30 am, Issei had completed the sacred gear crown of thorns, which he had called crown of Fudier, which could give him foresight and prophetic visions. This allowed him to predict what his opponents would do and can see who and what will happen in the next few days. It worked similar to Eon Baylor, another of his sacred gear, but except this one sees what the factions are doing without letting anyone sense this. This also gave him a severe advantage on their planning allowing him to plan his next attack and see all the possible outcomes. What the Assay sensed a presence, he recognized Artemis, but an additional presence came along with it, he then teleported to the entrance to see who it was. Meanwhile, Artemis and Hestia were near Haidu residence, as they started to enter, a voice then called out to them. I believe you are supposed to let me know when you bring guests Artemis. The duo then turned around to see Issei with an amused look on his face as he spoke. I never thought that Hestia would herself visit my humble abode. Issei spoke with a mocking tone as he then continued, so, what brings you here after all this time? I thought the Greeks wouldn't care for the two of you after what Big Daddy Zeus did. Issei taunted her in a mocking tone. 
Estia got angry that the red dragon compared her and the rest of her kin to her brother, but soon calmed down, she knew he could take her down if he wanted to. We are here because you have kept Athena against her will. Issei looked at Artemis, who had a look of apology. He understood that Artemis has to play her part of hating men, so he let it be. Look Hestia, I am no boser, and Athena is definitely not my Princess Peach. I have no reason to lock her up in a cage Issei spoke seriously, as Artemis spoke in slight anger. We are here because she shouldn't be with you, you damned man thing. Issei pretended to be slightly offended. She has been playing too much Resident Evil, it looks like. As he spoke in response. Wow it seems like even after years, your scuffle with Orion has taken over your head, you man-hating goddess. Issei spoke, to which Artemis wanted to cry, as she thought. Too far, Lord Issei Hestia was angry at this, as she then shouted. How dare you? You don't even know, the pain she went through Issei shrugged in response, as he spoke in a mocking tone. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Issei did not want to waste time with this goddess, as he walked away, Hestia then shouted. Wait. Issei looked at her slightly annoyed as he asked, what? We need to talk to Athena, we want to ask her, how is she doing? You think that we don't care for her because of what Zeus did, but can you let us talk? Hestia did not want to do this, but she pleaded from a dragon, something a goddess would think twice before doing, please, we beg you. Hestia fell to her knees and kneeled in front of Issei, with the latter being taken aback by this, never in his life did he expect this from a goddess, a Greek goddess, who are known to be prideful, in nature, he knew that they are known to be extremely reserved and expect everyone else to worship them or bow to them. Estus was embarrassed to do this, but it was necessary, since this was the only way she could talk to Athena without provoking or angering Issei, who could kill her without hesitation, Artemis was equally surprised, as she thought. You care for her I am surprised by this, Hestia. Artemis looked at Issei, expecting an answer from him. Issei looked at her for a moment and decided to let them be, as he spoke. Upstairs, you might want to go now, since after a while, she would be busy. Issei teleported back to his room as the two goddesses headed to Athena's room. Estia wanted to talk to Athena and she was happy that Issei did not stop her, Artemis wanted to talk to Issei sometime in the future. Scene change. Athena was inside her room, reading a book as she then suddenly heard knocks on the door. She looked at it as she muttered, Lord Issei. Athena thought that Issei had shown up with some advice seeking her wisdom as she opened the door, only to expect a surprise on the door. Athena Hestia shouted as she hugged Athena, the latter was completely overwhelmed by Hestia dashing, they twirled around for a moment after Athena was able to calm down as she spoke. H Hestia Athena looked down to see Hestia being worried, Athena was surprised, but she was nevertheless happy that someone came to see her. The three virgin goddesses were always close, and seeing Hestia here meant that she cared for her, despite what Zeus did to her, she looked at Athena with a smile as she asked, how have you been? Athena looked away and smiled as she spoke, sit down Hestia, I am glad you are here. Hestia nodded as the trio settled down, Athena then spoke, when I came here, I was not happy at all, both me and another one cried endlessly for the first few days, and truth be told, what Zeus did still haunts me I will never forgive him for abandoning me like this, he never even came to visit me. Athena spoke with anger in his voice, a tear fell down as Hestia hugged her to calm her down. After calming her down Athena then continued, back then, I thought I had no one, I was engaged to the brother of the faction's pillar and sold to him without hesitation, I knew he would violate and toy with me, even assault me. Athena spoke with slight sadness, this sadness was directed at herself since she did not know what kind of a person Issei was and she hated herself for doubting Issei. So did he. Hestia spoke with worry to which Athena shook her head as she responded. He never did, the first time I came here, he asked me that I could leave whenever I wanted to, but I had nowhere to go and I will not return to my father who didn't think twice in leaving me. He gave me my own room and let me settle in his house and he gave me time to adjust, Athena spoke with a smile as she continued, when I met Laisha, who was in a similar situation by me, we all decided to stick together, to only trust the ones that are engaged to him, you can ask Artemis about this, even Issei was no exception. The reason was because he had hatred towards all of us. Athena spoke with a slightly sad tone, she understood Issei's hatred at this point, with Artemis being well aware, she despised Zeus and will not hesitate to kill him if Issei asks her to do so. Hestia also understood, to some extent, after all the factions did not treat him well. After that, we came to know of the truth and we had one interaction and that showed me what kind of a man he is, Athena spoke with a smile, remembering that he gave Athena privacy, when I came from bathing, he was there, but upon realizing the situation, he went out to give me some time to change, he respected my privacy, something which most male gods in Greek don't do so. Estia and Artemis nodded in agreement, they had to agree that some gods don't know when to not stick their privates into other women, case in point Zeus, himself. After that, he asked me a question and kept a respectable distance from me, he then left and thanked me, and truth be told. 
He never forced me to be in this house or forced himself on me. Athena spoke with a smile, to her being with his say, seemed to be more of a blessing at this point. Even I can't deny that, whenever we talked to each other, he always kept a respectable distance from me as well. Ardma spoke with no lies, as Athena agreed to her words. Hestia then responded, I see Hestia spoke with a smile, as she looked away, I guess I was worried for nothing then, he is taking good care of you, Hestia got up and was ready to teleport, as Athena speaks, oh no. I am actually glad you visited me, unlike some others I was sometimes expecting, Athena spoke with a smile, as Hestia genuinely smiled at her, Artemis then joined her as they both teleported back to the Greek pantheon. That felt good meeting someone I loved Athena looked around, as she lay on the bed, she then spoke, well I should thank Issei for this, he really let me meet Hestia. Athena spoke with a blush on her face, as the necklace glowed for a while, her eyes changed color as it reverted back to normal. Am I falling for him? No way Athena shook her head, as she still had a blush, unbeknownst to her, she was falling for him. Scene change, Lilac's base, 12pm, Issei, along with Artemis, Elizabeth, Gondal, Quinella, Miyuki, Charlotte and Nyx, headed to Malak's base, as he looked to see Malak and Grievous waiting for them. Both Valerie and Ingvold were spying on the volley team, and team slash dog, and Ingvold towards the Hyadu residence, to make sure they are updated. So which faction are we attacking this time? Grievous spoke with an excited tone, as Issei spoke, not exactly a faction, but more accurately a very influential family, in the supernatural, the Pendragon family will be our next target. Issei spoke seriously to which Gondal asked, why the Pendragon family? I mean, they are not that strong, right? Gondal asked with a confused tone, as Issei responded, you see, but they are influential, two of the members can be a problem, that being Arthur Pendragon and Lafay Pendragon, our aim is to break their morale by capturing one of the people he cherishes, that being Elaine Westcott. Issei explained to the group, you see, Elaine is cared for by both Arthur and Le Fay, and if we capture her and turn her into our side, we can break the volley team completely, and besides, I wonder what kind of effect Dark Light would have on ordinary humans. Issei spoke with deep thought, earning nods from several. So you want to break the volley team, one of the most prominent teams in the DXD team? Gondal asked, earning a nod from Issei, as he spoke, Valerie is already on our side, and Karoka is mentally broken due to Dai's betrayal, the only people we have to deal with are Biku, Fenrir, Arthur and Lefei, even though one might argue that Lefei's mental state is not the same. Issei explained, as Artemis then asked, so who do you want us to go for the assault? Issei looked at her and spoke, Grievous and the droid army, along with Malak, and this time, even you, Artemis will join them, any questions? Issei looked at his team, as Elizabeth asked in an annoyed tone, why can't I go? Issei responded to her, because Michael and the other Seraphs have had their hands tied, they are desperate to make their faction have faith in them, and you have to pretend to have that. Issei spoke seriously, as Elizabeth did not seem happy, with Issei's words, as she exclaimed in slight sadness. But I don't want to be near those men, they are nothing but deceitful angels, Lord Issei, I beg you, I don't want to be with them anymore. Elizabeth's eyes became watery as Issei also felt slightly sad because of what happened, his hatred for Michael and the other Ceres was already high, but he understood that Elizabeth couldn't handle it much longer, as Artemis calmed her down, understanding that she is also having the same thoughts as Elizabeth is. Just a little more, you just need to tolerate them for a while longer, because after we deal with the Pendragons and their respective allies, we will go after the angels next, sounds good. Issei spoke with a small smile, to which Elizabeth reluctantly nodded, Artemis then gave some words of her own. Even I hate being among Zeus, but all you need to do is just keep some distance from them, and you can visit the Hyadu residence anytime you want, nobody will stop you, even Michael can't stop you, remember? Elizabeth looked at them and rubbed her eyes as she looked at Artemis and gave a nod. Gondal looked at her inner self and spoke mentally, you see, the factions have broken this poor girl, and look at how she is crying, don't you see that they wouldn't care for you? No, I don't think Lord Auden would do what Michael did to her, I still have faith in him inner Gondal responded angrily, she had a little faith in Auden, but that was soon going to disappear. See for yourself then, you will realize just like Artemis and Elizabeth have dot dot sooner or later, and you will ask Lord Issei to willingly join you, just like they did. Gondal spoke to her inner self before cutting off the communication. I understand Lord Issei, I won't disappoint you, Elizabeth spoke with a determined tone, as Issei nodded. He then remembered a certain fox they had managed to capture, he looked at Malak and asked, speaking of which, what happened to our fox Yusaka? Issei asked Malak, who gave the signal to two battle droids, who went inside, moments later they brought the captive Yusaka in the room. She looked the same as she was captured, however her expression was completely gone, her eyes were completely dull, and her facial expression was almost lifeless, it was almost as if the woman in front of her was a broken husk of her former self. 
Even her movement was almost sluggish, as if there was no life to her, this was the first sleeper agent, furthermore, she looked at Issei, her lifeless eyes and expression, unnerved Elizabeth and Charlotte, however the others were unaffected, Issei then commanded coldly. Isaka, you shall go on the mission to deal with the Pendragon clan, any objections? No Lord Issei, I do not have any objections, anything you ask me to do, I shall fulfill, and any request you have, I shall fulfill to its completion, and see to it that happens. Even if you ask me to die, I shall follow as you demand me to do so. Yusaka spoke with an emotionless tone, as Issei had a sadistic grin, and spoke. But you may leave now, Yusaka nodded, as the B-1 releases her, she then walks further into the base to prepare for the attack. I would suggest, you guys prepare, the attack will begin in a few hours, today is the day the Pendragon family falls. Issei spoke seriously, earning nods from Malak, Grievous and Artemis. They all then prepare for the assault on the Pendragon family, they won't have much time left. Chapter 18. Assault on the Pendragon Mansion. Pendragon Residence, 4 p.m. The sound of several screams, laments and pleas were heard throughout the mansion. This place was none other than the Pendragon Residence, in England, where Grievous watched with a cold gaze, as his droid army massacred anyone that stood in his way, showing no mercy to anyone that got in his way. General. I have some bad news. One of the Um droid commanders approached Grievous as he asked, what? The commander responded, the servant has escaped and is being escorted to a safe location. Grievous growled in response as he spoke in a furious tone. I will deal with them, myself. Grievous removed his cloak as he jumped into the battlefield, before he could go to deal with them, Issei approached him and spoke. You will be wasting your time. Issei spoke in a neutral tone as Grievous looked at him surprised as he asked, then what should we do? Issei responded to Grievous's question as he spoke, you see castles like these have hidden entrances, thankfully I managed to foresee every single location of them, with relative ease, Issei showed the several pathways and their exits. Understanding this, Grievous sends the locations to his droid commanders and commands. All units head towards the different locations, locate them, and capture the target alive. Roger Roger. All the droid commanders responded as they headed their units to the location. Grievous, I want Elaine and her companion alive, is that clear? Issei asks seriously, to which Grievous gives a nod as he heads to the location, he then looks at Gondol as he informs them. Well, it's a good thing you could come. Issei spoke seriously as he continues, Elizabeth couldn't make it due to helping Michael and the other Seraphs, trying to calm the seeds of rebellion taking place in the factions. She would have, but she had a job to perform so that Michael doesn't get suspicious, right? Gondol responded with a smile as she continued, so what is my role? You are backup, along with Miyuki, Quinella and Charlotte, and if Elizabeth manages to make it back, then inform her that she will join the assault as well. Gondol nods as they watch the droid army mercilessly kill anyone that got in their way, even magicians and knights did not stand a chance against them. Pendragon Residence, 5 p.m. A young British woman in her early twenties. She has black hair that is tied above her head and wears a maid outfit. They both were outside as they managed to leave through one of the unguarded exits. This was Elaine Westcott, the love interest of Arthur Pendragon and the guardian of La Fay Pendragon. Among her was another woman, a very beautiful pale-skinned girl with hip-length silver hair that had bangs hanging over her face, where it mostly hangs over on the right side and clear sky blue eyes. She wears a jacket-like trench coat with a white button-up shirt and black skirt. She is seen wearing a blue pendant gemstone with red ribbons, possibly indicating her royalty status. She also has golden chains looped around her left shoulder. These droids are everywhere, they know almost all of our secret escape tunnels. Elaine exclaimed with worry, as the woman gritted her teeth in fury, she tried fighting them with magic weapons, but it had no effect on them, they had barely escaped with their lives as they went through the secret tunnels. Earlier they were talking about the attacks that have been happening around the factions, thanks to the newly named droid faction, as well as the bad reputation due to Le Fay, contracting Dai Haidu as her contracted magician. But that was when they heard a loud explosion, and moments later a whole battalion of B-1 and B-2 super battle droids had showed up, they gunned all the guards and magicians mercilessly, Lord Uther Pendragon tried to stop them, but he was overwhelmed by the relentless horde of battle droids, the last thing they saw was him trying to defend himself and his wife from the battle droids. The two girls were traveling as they watched the battle droids mercilessly gun down, when Elaine stopped them all of a sudden, sensing something was wrong. She looked around as Elaine asked, what's wrong? Lafolia looked around as she spoke, the silence is unnerving, it is quiet, too quiet. Dot, dot, I can't feel anyone's presence, but I feel like we are being watched, she then sensed something as she pointed her gun to the shadows. Moments later, an arrow came by as the girls dodge, the arrow barely misses her, it was an energy arrow, moments later, someone comes from the shadows, it was goddess Artemis that showed up. Bravo. 
it seems like you managed to dodge an arrow I fired as a simple threat that caused them to stop, Artemis spoke in a mocking tone, clapping, as the girls were shocked to see her in front of them. The dusk light shone on her face, revealing her complete look. That's impossible, you're with them, Elaine exclaimed in shock and fear that a goddess had joined their side. You were with the Greek faction right, Elaine asked with fear. I was, but then that bastard Zeus abandoned me, Artemis spoke with slight anger in her voice, besides, it's nothing special, I was just a mere pawn, you could say that I am a traitor to the faction Artemis spoke after calming down. So you are with the droid faction. Lafolia asked with horror, as Artemis merely nodded and exclaimed with excitement and a touch of mockery. Ding. 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 We have a winner. Lafolia and Elaine were on guard, as Artemis muttered to grievous her location. Why are you even doing all this? Lafolia asked with anger in her voice, to which Artemis responded with annoyance. I told you before, I hate Zeus for what he did to me, and besides, Malak removed the blindfold that was on my eyes, I thought that I was on the path of peace, but I couldn't see a lot of things, Malak showed it to me, and ever since I have been grateful to them, Artemis spoke in gratitude, not wanting to reveal a say yet, since they would meet him soon. Just because of this, Malak is only using you. Lafolia shouted, as Artemis shook her head as she spoke with slight fury in her voice. No. He showed me the truth, he showed me how bad I was and made me realize the error of my ways. And how dare you doubt him. When you know nothing about him. Artemis spoke while reading her bow. You have become his slave Lafolia aimed her gun at the goddess as she spoke, where was the goddess that hated men. Lafolia tried to make her see reason, but Artemis only shook her head and responded. That fool long died, Malak made me see how foolish I was, he showed me that all men are not like him, at first I did not see, but he showed me the error of my ways, I resisted, but he never gave up, and I joined him on my own accord. Artemis spoke with a smile on her face, as Lafolia and Elaine tried to look for a way out of the situation, but couldn't find any, they gritted their teeth in fury for being in this situation. Like it or not, we are leaving here, and then, we will reveal everything to the Lafolia couldn't complete, as suddenly a telekinetic push sent her behind. Lady Lafolia. Elaine shouted in fear and worry, rushing to her aid, Lafolia managed to get up as three more figures came from the shadows. Lafolia widened her eyes when she saw who they were, she knew her chances of escaping were next to none, as she recognized them to be Malak and Grievous, but what surprised her was the fact that even Gondal was here. Roswas's grandmother being involved in this horrified her to no end, as she was a master magician, their chances reduced to next to nothing, but even then, Lafolia spoke angrily, I would rather die than be killed by any of you. Lafolia's tone was cold as Gondal responded. Not really, someone wants you alive. Dot, dot, we don't need you, but we cannot let you escape. Gondal spoke with a smile pointing to Lafolia as Malak speaks. But we can't let you go and warn the factions, it will take away the fun. Griva spoke with a mocking tone as she was surrounded by several others. Damn all of you. Lafolia shouted at the top of her lungs as Grievous twirled his hands and brought out his four light blades. It's time to take care of you permanently. Griva spoke with a cold tone. In that case, Gondal, join with Grievous and take care of her, and I and Artemis will handle Elaine. Malak commanded, as Grievous nods, he and Gondal prepare to deal with Lafolia, who points her gun at the metalloid monstrosity and fires a light missile, Grievous deflects it, to him the bullet was in slow motion. Angered Lafolia keeps firing more bullets, aiming her gun at the metalloid monstrosity, who keeps deflecting them with ease. Gondal had a smile throughout the battle, don't underestimate me. Lafolia exclaimed, as Grievous cackled in response, his laugh unnerved her, but she was resilient, she refused to give up. The fight between the six was watched by a say at a distance, after a while, Valerie, Ingvold and Elizabeth teleported next to them. Why are you attacking the Pendragon residence? Valerie exclaimed, she and Ingvold were both unaware of this, as a say asked a simple question. Is it not obvious? They are my enemies, remember? Valerie calmed down, as she looked in horror, a say then responded coldly, and you do know that this would happen. Be grateful I did not send you to do the deed. Valerie gulped and nodded, she understood that Issei was dealing with them himself. I have performed my task as you wanted, Lord Michael and the others suspect nothing. Elizabeth spoke with a smile, to which Issei smiled at her and responded, Good job Elizabeth, we watch the fight, it is anyways coming to its conclusion. Elizabeth watched, as Valerie and Ingvold also joined Issei, Ingvold then asked, So who are the targets this time? Issei looked at her and responded, Elaine Westcott and Lafolia Rehavane. Valerie paled, as Issei spoke looking at her pale look. Relax, we intend to capture them alive, I have some purpose for them. Issei spoke, as Valerie nodded, she understood another will be joining them, I always wondered what will happen if dark light touches a human body. Valerie was confused at this, as she asked, dark light? What is that? Issei looked at her and spoke, another secret that Lucifer has kept to himself, it is a light that is designed to convert an angel into a dark angel. 
I, I didn't know of this, Valerie spoke with a tone of surprise, as she asked, who else knows of this? As of now, no one, except for me, and probably Lucifer, but if you want more detail about them, ask Elizabeth. Yes, I will explain it to you sometime in the future, but for now, let's watch, the battle is coming to its conclusion, Elizabeth spoke seriously. Speaking of which, how did the spying missions go? Issei asked both Valerie and Ingvold. No, they suspect nothing, they are unable to do anything, because now they are trying to convince you to help them. Valerie spoke as Ingvold continued. They are convincing me to stay in the DXD team, and they are not paying attention to you anymore. Ingvold spoke seriously, she seemed to be devoted, as compared to Valerie. I see very well, let's watch, the match is almost done anyway. Issei and the remaining watch the final moments of the fight. Meanwhile, La Folia was on her knees, her clothes were partially torn, as her body had several burnt wounds, she couldn't move, as Gondol used gravity magic to prevent her from escaping. No this can't be La Folia spoke with fear, as Grievous twirled his blade and kicked her towards a distance, she was knocked out cold, as Gondol approached her and carried her. Elaine is in a similar situation, as she was breathing heavily, she was out of mana, as Artemis used her bow and arrow, as she unleashed an arrow of light energy. Elaine took a direct hit, as an explosion took place, she was on her knees, as she tried her best to get up. She then looks at them, and shouts. Why? Why are you even doing this? I have never done anything to you. Malak cackled, as he brought out dark light infused with nails from Alfeca Tyrant, as he spoke. Your biggest mistake is to trust a liar of the factions. It's a shame that you failed to see the truth until it was too late. What will you do to me? Elaine spoke with fear as Malak responded. You will be seeing it soon. You will kill your own lover Arthur. Well, you can't do anything about it. Malak brought dark light closer as Elaine started to pass out. Her vision became blurry as she looked up, looking at the moon, muttering. Please, save me Arthur Elaine lost her consciousness as a tear fell from her eyes. She wondered what the droid faction would do to her. Malak then carried the knocked out Elaine as he then proceeded to perform the final command. Her apron fell down signifying what had happened. Isaka. Destroy the castle, leave no trace of anything. The voice boomed from the entire arena as Yusaka showed up in her giant fox form, which was 10 meters in height. Malak and the others along with their armies teleported back to the meeting location. As you wish Lord Malak. Yusaka unleashed a giant bomb made of foxfire at the castle destroying it to smithereens, leaving no trace of it except for a burnt ground, no one survived the blast as no trace of a human or anything else was present. Isaka was then teleported out of there with the help of Malak. Scene change. Time skip. The next day. England. 9.30 a.m. The leader of the fallen angels, Shemhaz I along with Azazel, watches the home for the Pendragon family in sadness, the complete annihilation of the Pendragon residents, gathering the attention of both the human and the supernatural world. There was only one thing that remained, and that was Elaine's tattered maid apron. That cursed Malak is a monster for doing all this. Shemhaz I exclaimed furiously. Worst of all there is no trace of them to know what happened. Azazel exclaimed as anger was present in his voice. Valerie Lucifer had a look of anger on her face, she hated what happened to Arthur and his family, as both Lord and Lady Pendragon were confirmed to have been taken out due to the blast, they are both dead. Azazel knew that she was not going to rest until Malak was slain by her hands. I can't imagine the pain they are going through Azazel thought with sadness, knowing how much Valerie cared for her team. This shouldn't be happening, how dare that bastard attack my family. Arthur exclaimed with fury in his voice as he controlled his tears falling from his eyes. Don't worry, we will destroy that bastard and find your maiden in love, Bikku spoke trying to cheer him up, but Valerie only retorted angrily. This is not the time to make jokes, we have to plan the next move if we need to beat him. Bikku rubbed his head as he looked away, he was equally sad and furious at what happened. Scene change. Malak's base, 10 a.m. Lafolia Rehavane woke up in the Malak's base, she rubbed her head in pain remembering what had happened. She looked around to see that she was in a dark room, she remembered how she fought against Grievous and Gondol, their attacks were too overwhelming, and Grievous either deflected or dodged her attack. Well Gondol gave her difficulties in maintaining her form. She eventually fell as a result. She tried to move, but was unable to do so. Ah! She exclaimed in pain, she looked to see that her wounds were still healing. I would suggest you to not move Lafolia looked to see a purple-haired woman, sitting on a chair. So you are a traitor too, Lafolia angrily exclaimed, as the woman, identified as Quinella, spoke with a smile. Traitor. I was never part of the alliance to begin with. Lafolia got angry at this, as she spoke. The faction leaders will realize who their enemies are, and they will win and eliminate you. Lafolia shouted. That's funny, you should work as a comedian, and the best part is that you don't even know who the biggest enemy is, you will lose. Quinella spoke with a chuckle, as Lafolia retorted. Don't sing of victory. Lafolia retorts, however she was quiet when she heard pairs of footsteps, the voice who was that of a man, spoke, do you die a hero or as a villain? 
The man spoke as he entered, Lafolia widened her eyes in shock as she saw who the people were, it was Issei Haidu and Charlotte Beelzebub. No. Lafolia spoke in disbelief as she continued, you were the hero, why are you even doing this? I am sorry, never was the hero, I tried to be, but I was always the bad guy. Issei spoke coldly, that's not true, everyone knows you are the hero. Lafolia retorted as Charlotte responded coldly, the reason was that Issei revealed the truth, I am pretty sure, if he did not, the factions would have been under the blind faith that Dai was their hero. That's right, but that's only now, before they saw me as trash or threat. Issei spoke mockingly to which Lafolia remained silent, that's what I thought, everyone wants me to be a hero, why should I be the hero to hypocritical people like you? I am sorry. I am sorry for coming to think you are a nuisance. Lafolia spoke with tears in her eyes as Issei shouted with fury. See you are sorry now, because I am a mass murderer, the villain and the enemy of the factions, once I wanted to help people and defend them. And what did they do to me, you know? Lafolia shook her head in confusion, they turned their backs on me. And I broke my bones and hands for nothing. Issei shouted in fury as Charlotte and Quinella calmed him down with a worryful look on their faces. But this is not the way, we can talk to the Lafolia tried to reason with Issei, as he interrupted her, I refuse, I will take revenge against all those that ruin me. Why are you doing this? Is it revenge? Lafolia asked fearfully as Issei responded. Revenge is one of the goals, I desire to create a beautiful world where humans and supernatural beings coexist, but that cannot happen with the factions around, they will not accept it, and that is why I am carrying out my plan, eliminating those people and carrying out peace in this world. Issei declared with a smile in his words as tears appeared in his eyes. You are going to kill innocent people for your stupid war, Lafolia asked angrily, to which Issei looked at her coldly. Innocent people Issei scoffed, the same people who saw me as a nuisance, who humiliated me and never gave me the opportunity to show what I am capable of Issei spoke coldly, are we talking about those innocent people, Miss Rehavane? Issei spoke to which Lafolia kept her hands on her face and tears started to fall from her eyes. Issei, Quinella and Charlotte leave the room, closing the cell as Lafolia remains in prison, as she cried endlessly, Issei did not know what to do with her, he would think of her fate later on. Scene change, so what are going to do with Lafolia? Issei asked his allies, to which Malak responded, I would suggest killing her, we see no reason to keep her alive, if anything her abilities can be used by even Elizabeth and myself. Malak spoke as Elizabeth responded, her skills can be useful as a sleeper agent, she can be used to turn against her loved ones. Malak was surprised by this as Grieva spoke, I agree with the angel, I will personally train her and we can use her skills against Pendragon's allies. You sure about this, I could easily take her place if you wanted to. Malak asked with a tone full of surprise that Grieva spoke this, knowing his personality. It would be fun to turn her against her own family, the grief would be so enjoyable. The cyber general exclaimed, earning sweat drops from everyone. But Elizabeth is correct, our chances of victory will be higher, since she has inside of the Pendragon allies, her memory will be useful to us, since she can give us access to many of the Pendragon's secrets, General Kalani spoke with an insightful tone. I see then even I don't mind. Malak responded with a neutral look. I do not see a reason to kill her, the more sleeper agents we have with us, the more advantage we will have against the factions. Ardma spoke in agreement as Gondal nodded in agreement. Valerie and Ingvold were absent because they weren't trusted enough to be a member of the table, same went for Yusaka, since sleeper agents are more or less slaves, meant to listen to commands without hesitation. Miyuki was absent because she was training. Well then it's settled then, we will let her remain in consciousness for a while before we perform the conversion, speaking of which way is Elaine. Issei spoke with curiosity. She is unstable, the best way to describe her is an angered rabbit dog, the dark light is not compatible with human blood it seems, the good thing is that she can be kept under control, but she has lost all sense of humanity and has become a feral beast, Kalani explained to Issei, who nodded, he then spoke, very well, report me any changes in her, we will be leaving, we cannot let the folks at home suspect us. Malak, Grievous and Kalani nodded as Gondol and Elizabeth teleported and Artemis, Issei, Quinella and Charlotte headed outside the base to head back home. Scene change. I do residence, 12 p.m. Athena was walking towards Issei's room as she wanted to ask him for something, she knocked the door as she asked, Issei? Are you there? When she got no response, she knocked again and called his name, however she once again got no response as she entered the room. She looked around to see the room darkened, with no lights on, his quilt was on the bed, unfolded, she checked the bathroom next, only to find that there was no one present. I am glad there is no one in the bathroom. Athena spoke with a little embarrassment as she remembered their previous encounter, she had no choice but to wait for him in this room. While sitting in the room, she wanted to ask Issei about some things, she wondered what he thought of her, as she thought. Should I ask Issei about this? 
Athena looked worried, Issei did not show any hatred towards her, or anger towards her, she was even more happy that Issei let her talk to her fellow Olympian Hestia, as she remembered how much he could have stopped her or eliminated her. Athena remembered her past, as she became furious with Zeus for giving her away to Issei, but in reality, it turned out it to be a blessing, Issei never forced her or forced himself on her, which made her happy, she started to be grateful to him, but she wondered what he really thought of her, given that she tried to prove that he was with Malak. Furthermore, she was also one of the few that agreed with Zeus of making Issei bind to the factions, such things caused immense regret in her heart. She did not want to do this, but had no choice, she had to follow the decision of her father and the others, and she hated that. Sighing, she decided to leave, since Issei was not present, in the room, she got up, ready to leave, and decided to talk to him, at another time. Once she got out of the room, she was caught by an unexpected person. Lady Athena. It was Sekvera, who had a look of surprise, as she asked, what are you doing in Issei's room? Um, well Athena was embarrassed, being caught like this, Sekvera would misunderstand her, as Athena tried to explain, it is not what it looks like. No, I know Issei is not in the room. Sekvera shook her head and responded, she was the one of the few that she trusted without a problem. She looked around as she spoke, so why were you in his room? I just wanted to ask some questions. Athena responded as Sekvera looked at her, Athena then asked, what's your thoughts on Issei now? He is not that bad, he never tried to do anything with us and gave us freedom to do so, he is a good friend. Sekvera spoke with a smile, before changing into expression of slight fear, but I fear, he hates us, even if it is a little, he hates me and Laisha because we are devils, even if he does not hurt us, physically or mentally, or intends to do so, but he might hold some animosity against us. I know you fear him, but he is nice, just talk to him Sekvera, and if he does hurt you, you can come to me, you should conquer your fear on your own. Athena spoke seriously, earning a nod from the Aguirre's heiress, as she spoke, I will give it a try, maybe in the future dot dot but not now. Sekvera spoke, earning a smile from Athena as she responded, you should, believe me, you won't regret it. Athena spoke, as she left to head to her room, Zeus giving her to Issei actually benefited her, rather than harm, her. Scene change, I do residence, 2 p.m., things are looking pretty complicated Issei said, while he was creating gauntlets that were meant for his two sacred gears, Innovate Clear and Telos Karma, he remembered the information he had received. Hmm, it seems like this Mitsuya Kanzaki was able to perform this from the information I had gotten from Grigori before it was destroyed by Malak's hands. Issei spoke, remembering the information he had gotten, it seemed like Grigori was not a big fan of this Mitsuya as he was deemed dangerous, but when he found out more about him, he was surprised to see that he was a human. But what surprised him was that he was the first known person to have two long eyes with him, that being Innovate Clear and Telos Karma. Both gears are known to make him impersonate God, the first was capable of creating an ideal dimension, allowing him to create his own ideal world, with even living beings involved in it. The second one, on the other hand, can manipulate the probabilities to the user's favor, he wondered what would happen if both get involved. Hartner, are you sure of this using two sacred gears that are polar opposites of each other? That's crazy. Drake exclaimed in surprise as Issei responded, well this ain't my first rodeo, right Drake Issei spoke with a grin as Drake gave an exasperated sigh, he remembered how he was able to create the vanishing Welsh dragon balance breaker, it was a struggle, but he was able to do it. Although I wonder if I use the balance breaker of all Long Ina sacred gears at once, I wonder how powerful I will become Issei spoke, which made Drake wonder what his partner was thinking, he also wondered what would happen and how strong would Issei become. Issei continued working on the gauntlets, he could use both Innovate Clear and Telos Karma, but he wondered if he could achieve the full power of both the gears at once like Mitsuya Kanzaki has. He deemed him as a problem, since he could alter the probabilities of his victory, but judging by his past records, so far, he has not found any attacks from him or his organization, cross time's kiss against Malak or his allies. But I must prepare, he can be a potential problem Issei spoke, he would be a fool if he did have preparations against him, he then remembered a certain someone who had managed to find a way to nullify sacred gears and render them useless. I wonder if Rizavim would help me with this. Issei spoke in thought, if he didn't he would just extract the power from him. Issei worked on the gauntlets, he had two choices if Mitsuya were to ever become a problem in his plans, the first was to use his power against him or to manage to get his access on the sacred gear canceller, which can perform as intended. Scene change, time skip, Malak's base, 7.30 pm, Issei entered Lafolia's prison cell along with Nyx and Malak, as he had a recording orb with him, as he opened the door. Lafolia looked at him with surprise in her eyes, her cheeks have been dried due to the endless crying, as she had dull eyes looking at Issei's cold eyes, Nyx then commanded, get up. Lafolia did so, but her movement was sluggish, she was dull, as she looked at Issei, and asked in a weak tone, what do you want? Lafolia looked at him, her hair was partially ruined due to the fact that she did not care for it. 
You don't believe how far the factions have fallen, right? Issei spoke, as La Folia retorted. The factions will soon know about you and will stop you, hi do Issei, they will find a way Issei chuckled as he spoke. Oh I plan on doing the great reveal myself, but there is still a lot of time for that. Issei spoke in a mocking tone, and besides, I am not aligned with any faction, so how am I a traitor? You must be stopped, you are a threat. Issei got a bit annoyed as he spoke with anger in his voice. Oh this reminds me, remember when I had come to your place and asked your family something, did you know what your family did, Issei exclaimed, as La Folia started to have tears in her eyes remembering the incident, she remained silent, tell me, what did they do to me? La Folia was quiet, remembering what happened, Issei then screamed, answer me, damn it. I La Folia started to cry, we did nothing. We left you to your fate and ignored you. La Folia shouted as Issei started to make a small laugh and spoke. You see, it wasn't so hard, now was it Issei looked at her, as he continued, they were just interested in power, and yet they failed to see someone who could have helped them. Issei spoke coldly, I could have saved many people, if it wasn't for him. I, I don't understand, what do you mean, save many people, La Folia asked in confusion, as Issei spoke. Do the names Rondo Rehavane and Pascalia Rehavane ring a bell? La Folia widened her eyes as she nodded, they do, could you remember the attack that Riz of orchestrated on your clan that cost their lives? My sisters, what do you mean, you were able to save them? La Folia asked in confusion as Issei spoke. I would have or could have if it wasn't for someone interrupting me. Issei spoke with slight frustration in his voice. Was it Dai Haidu? La Folia asked with confusion as Issei responded. Exactly, he knocked me down to hog the glory, and because of his foolish actions, it cost the lives of your sisters. Here take a look, Issei activated the memory orb, it activated as she saw everything. Recording. Issei was looking around, several stray devils were surrounding him, he was breathing heavily as he was using hand-to-hand -hand combat defeating several of them, but they were too overwhelming. He looked around to see several of them chuckling seeing his condition. I guess I have to use my sacred gear Issei mutters, looking around the scene, he begins to cover himself with an attack. However, someone struck his leg with a black flash, causing him to kneel, his leg became injured as he looked at his attacker. Thanks for doing my work again, you moron. Dai spoke with a sinister grin as Issei shouted in anger, damn it Dai now is not the time to hog glory, people are dying here. Oh I know, that is why I thank you, now let me take it from here. Dai tried to fight the devils, but he was overwhelmed, he was overwhelmed by fear as he spoke. Wait. Don't kill me. Dai exclaimed with fear, kill them, kill those two girls. Dai pointed to Rondo and Pascalia as the demons pointed towards them, who were unconscious as Issei watched in horror, the demons brutally maul the two girls to death. Recording end. I could have saved them had I activated my boosted gear, but couldn't because my brother wanted to hog all the glory. I can't believe that your family and Lefay's now deceased family would let some demons in your castle, Issei spoke with disappointment, at least be happy that we haven't taken things further, yet Issei spoke with mockery. My sisters. Lefolia spoke with sadness as Issei spoke. And the worst part was that the Pendragons declared them to be martyrs, just some children that lost their lives, such a shame, it had to end for them this way, Issei spoke feigning sadness as tears fell from Lefolia's eyes. I am sorry. Oh don't you dare apologize. You remember what you did to me, right Issei shouted, causing her to cover her head as she begged. Please stop. Issei nevertheless continued, you told me to never step foot in your house ever again and I would regret it. No, please I am sorry. La Folia exclaimed in regret as Issei looked at her dead in the eye, he had his Alfeca tyrant ready to make her serve him, however, as he was ready to remove some nails, he heard a surprise exclaim. Wait. La Folia asked as Issei stopped momentarily as he responded, what? I am willing to repay you, you tried to help us, we didn't listen, I didn't listen, La Folia spoke with sadness before pleading, so please give me a chance. Issei looked at her, he identified that she was not lying as Issei spoke, you didn't listen, so why should I listen? Issei asked coldly as Nix and Malak wondered what she was going to do next. Just this once, I promise you won't regret it, La Folia pleaded Issei, however he was not in a mood, he was ready to turn her into a sleeper agent, but a hand came in front of him. Nix. Issei asked to which the primordial goddess looked at Issei as she spoke. What do you propose? If you tell us something that is valuable, then we may change our plans, otherwise, we will turn you into a sleeper agent just like Yasaka is. Nix's tone was cold, it even brought chills to Issei and Malak. She was dead serious at this. La Folia shivered, she gulped in fear hearing the battle droids talk about the sleeper agents, they are more akin to slaves that Issei would turn her into even committing suicide for his goals. She feared having that fate. 
My family is quite influential in both the supernatural side as well as the human world. We also know about how and which companies the devil families operate on. We can help you in ruining them financially so that they can no longer receive income and then you can use that to attack them, wiping them out with ease. Lafolia spoke with fear in her voice as Issei scoffed in response. Do you think I wouldn't know that is why I want to wipe out the Pendergon family as well as the Rehavain family along with any of their mage family allies? Issei exclaimed in annoyance as Lafolia shook her head in response. No, I mean, I can convince them to your side. I want to avenge my sister's demise from the factions. Lafolia spoke coldly. I can bring them to your side and have them as an ally, Lord Issei. I can even serve you as a knight. If you so wish I want to make amends for my actions in the past, won't you give me the chance? Lafolia spoke with regret as Issei did not see much weight in her voice as he spoke. That's not enough. I will only be satisfied till your family falls down. Goodbye Lafolia. You will be my sleeper agent. Issei spoke with a cold tone as he brought out several nails to make her into a sleeper agent as Lafolia begged for a second chance as she begged. I don't mind serving you, but I want to serve you willingly and not by this method. Lafolia pleaded to say, as she continued, I would rather die than let an impostor serve you from my body than my own free will, I desire to serve you on my own accord. Lafolia spoke seriously as Nix who saw her resolve spoke. Issei wait. Issei stopped as Nix crouched to her level and spoke, so you really think that your family will listen to you? What if they are blinded by loyalty? Tell me then should we kill them then, just like we originally intended to do so. No, my family is one of those families that repays debts, no matter what happens, we have that as our family motto, if I tell them what happened to my sisters, they will be convinced they will be Lafolia pleaded, as Issei looked at her, none of her words were of lies, as Issei was till in disbelief, Nick sensing this and spoke, I think we should let her talk to her family, if she can convince them to join us, then it would make our job much easier. Issei looked at her and responded, you sure? Nix nods, as she continues, otherwise, we will wipe out their family using the Leviathan. Malak nods in response, as Lafolia felt a little bit hope, Issei then sighs and responds, Very well, but if you do betray me, you will die a horrible death. And to make sure you keep your promise, Issei generated a small dragon shot and compressed it into a ball. As he enchanted the ball, the ball then went inside her body, as she felt something off. If you do think or try to betray me, this ball will explode killing you before you can do anything, you will die in a horrible way, Issei spoke seriously and coldly, as Lafolia gulped in fear, she was even barely trusted to have faith, as Malak, Issei and Nix leave the room, leaving the cell door open, as he speaks, when you head to your residence, I will be joining you. In an event the negotiations don't go as planned, I will personally eliminate your parents and wipe out everyone from the Rehavain family, is that clear? Lafolia nods in response as she decides to leave as soon as possible, as she speaks. You won't regret this. Lafolia exclaims, however Issei was long gone from the location, along with Nix and Malak. Say, why did you want to give her a chance, Nix? Issei asked, he was not expecting Nix to do this, given her nature, as she responded, her skills will be useful to our goals, and her not being a sleeper agent like Valerie and Ingvald will manage to bring one of the most influential families in both worlds to our side, and if Lafolia claims what she is capable of, we can use this to our advantage, we can ruin the devil faction completely, and coupled with Miyuki's truth they will be in complete tatters, Issei nods to Nix's explanation, as he speaks, so we can bring their riches to our side, interesting Issei spoke with a deep thought, as Mal Malak asks, should I prepare the army in case Rehavain's choice does not work? Issei nods as Malak leaves to do so, with Issei and Nix walking into the darkness of the base, planning their next move. Scene change. Issei and Nix were walking throughout the base, it had increased in size compared to before, as Quinella and Charlotte interrupted them, as Quinella asked. Ice, can we ask you for a favor? Issei looked at them and smiled. What is it? Issei asked as Charlotte responded. We want to help you destroy the factions. Issei was surprised as he asked. How so? Charlotte and Quinella responded, we want some of the holy nails from Alfeca Tyrant, we want to bring in more sleeper agents. Quinella spoke, as Charlotte asked, would you please let us do so, Issei looked at the girls and responded, you don't need to plead, here, just give me a minute, I will have to make some changes, since the two of you are half devils, alright. The girls nodded and grinned, while Nick smiled sweetly, Issei shivered when he sensed that his two battle droids spoke, oh. It seems like the supreme leader is in T-R-O-U-B-L-E, one of the droids spoke, as the other responded, this is called a marital spat, we will be seeing a lot of those here. Nix turned to them and exclaimed, I would suggest the two of you not to get involved in other people's matters, otherwise I will make you regret it, is that clear Nix generated her aura, making Issei look at them with fear, they both understood that Issei will not save them, as they exclaimed, Roger. Roger. Both the battle droids ran as fast as they could, leaving everyone bewildered at what just happened, the others did not bother speaking due to the situation. 
Once he was done creating the nails, he gave 30 each to both Quinella and Charlotte. Once he was done, he turned around and embraced Nyx, making her lose her smile and become a blushing mess as the girls behind him pouted. Issei then released her and turned to the girls as he hugged them as well, making them both blush. They kept the nails down. Issei sighed in relief. Look, I love all of you, so please, don't be jealous for such things, cause you kind of scare me, please. The girls chuckled at this, as they knew that Issei really loved them, Issei had a wry smile on his face, as the girls calmed down, Issei then asked, speaking of which, what candidates have you chosen? Issei asked, as Quinella spoke with a smile, I was thinking of going after Gaspar and Karoka from the Devils, then we have Gabriel from the Angels, she can be useful, we can use Penemu from the Fallen Angels. Quinella responded to her series of targets. Let me take some from you. I can go after Akeno and Zenobia, Valerie from the Vampires, and we can use Roswis as an additional support for the Norse. Not bad choices, but won't Gasper be a problem, I discovered that his forbidden Baylor view can turn into a Longinus. Quinella shook her head as she responded, Once we have found a way to ambush him, we can easily turn him to our side, he has been even more introverted ever since Dai's betrayal, he will easily be turned to our side. Quinella spoke, as Issei responded with a nod. And we do have infiltrators in the Greek faction, and we can deal with the Hindu if necessary, since there is a chance that they may pull out from the treaty. So I hope you don't mind Issei shook his head and responded. No, make sure to bring them to me once you are done, and plus Valerie was supposed to be one of the engaged girls given to me. I always wondered where she was Issei spoke with surprise, as he was not going to waste his time asking Omenhold about this. I assume that they managed to find a way, since you didn't bother asking, so she did not come. Nix responded, as Issei nodded, he was certainly going to enjoy her as a sleeper agent, along with her friend Gasper. Well I think I should be heading towards La Folia's residence, I believe the negotiations will begin soon. Issei spoke as Nix nodded, she then commands the droid army to cloak themselves and surround the mansion, as if the negotiations go south, he would eliminate the whole family. Issei left the room, as the girls began their tasks to deal with the factions, Nyx decided to prepare in taking down the angel faction, she wondered what happened to Gabriel, her distraught expression, would no longer take it, and soon she might turn into a fallen. Scene change, vampire territory, 7pm, Gabriel was talking to the pink-haired girl and the white-haired girl, she remembered that she was one of the few that knew of their existence, as she spoke, so you want to meet Issei, right Mocha? Both the girls looked at the seraph with a serious tone, as the white-haired girl spoke seriously, she was Mokiyura Akashia, she was the colder one of the twins, and won't hesitate to hurt anyone that threatens her family, she is sadistic of the two twins as well. We do, but what brings a seraph like you here, and how would you let us meet him? Mokiyura spoke seriously, she did not trust Gabriel or any of the faction leaders. And how do you know of our status, we clearly faked our deaths, and we even wiped out Icon's memory, so that he would not come after us, because of our clan. Mocha Amakakashiya was the pink-haired girl, she spoke in a sad tone, she was not someone to hurt others, only doing it when necessary. I have my ways. Gabriel spoke with a sing-along tone, as she then changed into a much more formal and serious tone. I can let you meet him, with nothing in return it is my way of thanking him dot dot for his help, Gabriel spoke seriously as she then warned the girls. But he is not the same icon you once knew him as. Gabriel's warning brought shivers to Mocha Amak, as Mocha Yura glared at Gabriel, but even she was nervous about it. What do you mean by that? Mokiyura spoke seriously, as Gabriel spoke with a sigh. Things have changed in the supernatural, and he is one of the changes that will shock you. Gabriel was being cryptic, but she was not wrong, as she continued, but even if you want to meet him, then I will help you with that, even after seeing his changes. We accept. Both sisters spoke in unison, as Gabriel smiled, she then spoke, in that case, meet me tomorrow at sundown, I will take you to his house. Both the sisters nodded as Gabriel teleports away, leaving the two girls excited as Mocha Amak exclaims in happiness. I am so excited to meet Icon Mocha Yura smiles at her twin's happiness as she responds, Me too, sis, me too. Mocha Amak hugs Mocha Yura in happiness, who returns the hug as they both were happy with what happened. Unknown to them, Gabriel's warning would come true, shocking the girls as their essay has changed a lot since the last time they saw him. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.